Some Seattleites are still trying to get back home from overseas, like Simon Hamlin. Before the coronavirus outbreak was declared a global pandemic, the 46-year-old left for an island off the coast of Thailand. He spent the last few weeks trying to return to Seattle, but by Monday, he told me he had changed his mindset. And so I booked two different flights. Both of them got canceled. And, um, you know, at a certain point, you realize uh, they, they might get canceled while you're midair. You could arrive to a connecting spot, a connecting country, and you might be stuck in an airport. So that became a very real, you know, risk with any travel. Um, and it's kind of impacted, you know, what, I, what I've decided to do going forward. So what is your philosophy at this point? At this point, I'm really, uh, you know, I'm in a really comfortable spot. I feel safe. I feel protected. I'm in a good, healthy community um, here in Thailand. And really the risks uh, to, to fly home. So getting caught in an airport, 30 plus hours of travel and what that just does to your immune system, even in the best of situations, you know, without the threat of the virus um, and going home and not knowing where I would be living. Cause I, I had sold my, my condo in Seattle. All my stuff is in storage. I don't have a place to go back to and I don't want to put any of my family members at risk. So at this point, I'm going to stay here. Ah, but there's a twist. Within the last 24 hours, the State Department issued further tightening of travel restrictions and warned Simon that if he stayed, he might not be able to return until June. So he has now booked one last flight. It leaves tonight our time to try to come back home. His 35-hour itinerary includes a 30-minute ferry ride off an island, a 90-minute flight to Bangkok, a 6-hour flight to Seoul, South Korea, 17 hours of overall layovers, and then a 10-hour flight to Seattle, assuming none of those legs gets canceled.